this spot back with another video. I'm reckless. I'm right, Chris. Got debunking the Trump is racist myth. You feel me? YouTube not gonna catch that because my voice is broken. Watching a fight last night and yelling. I lost my voice. Yeah. <laughs> Big Sean O'Malley fan. Definitely did his thing last night. I already know what's going down. Let's get a video. Thirteen seconds. Literally, the media counted how many seconds passed between the time a crowd at a rally in North Carolina began chanting, send her back, send her back, and the president stopped the chant. Send her back, 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 send her back. Thirteen seconds? My goodness, that's practically an eternity. Four months. You see, here's the deal. After calling Trump a Hitler, a Nazi, a fascist, a dictator, they actually believe he has the power that a Nazi, a racist, a fascist, and a dictator literally has over crowd control. Even worse, the president sent out a series of tweets before North Carolina going after these four congresswomen, affectionately known as the squad. In fact, his tweets got President Trump condemned by the House. They passed a motion to do so. The resolution is adopted. To give you an idea of how farcical this whole thing is, Emmanuel Cleaver, one of those who voted for the motion, even said, why are we reacting like this to every time President Trump tweets? What are you going to do the next time the president tweets? He's playing us like a Stradivarius. He <laughs> Wait a second. What exactly did President Trump tweet that got him labeled once again racist? Let's look at them. So yeah, and I wanted to understand that too, why Trump got taken off of Twitter, because I never understood that. Yeah, because I thought he was on there, then he got taken off. Then he, was, he had his page again. But he drew social now. Oh, yeah, that's what you said. True. So interesting to see progressive Democrat congresswomen who originally came from countries whose governments are a complete and total catastrophe, the worst, most corrupt, and inept anywhere in the world, if they even have a functioning government at all, now loudly and viciously telling the people of the United States, the greatest and most powerful nation on earth, how our government is to be run. Why don't they go back and help fix the totally broken and crime infested places from which they came? Then come back and show us how it's done. These places need your help badly. You can't leave fast enough. I'm sure that Nancy Pelosi would be very happy to quickly work out free travel arrangements. Oh my goodness. What a racist to tell, quote, <laughs> people of color, close quote, say the media and the Dems, to go back to their original countries. After all, only Ilan Omar is from another country, Somalia. The rest were born and raised here. How racist is that? Not to digress, but may I inform you of a tweet that was sent out by Rashida Tlaib in 2015, four years ago? Deport this <laughs> blank hole. Charming. Again. <laughs> 2015. Oh, and how about this tweet from Ilan Omar in 2012? We are citizens and can't be deported. Why don't we deport you to wherever you came from? Again, that was 2012. And one more time, it was the media and the Dems who immediately informed us that the president directed his ire towards people of color. I read you the tweets. President made no reference to color whatsoever. It was the Democrats and the media that decided that was relevant. Why? Because they want to brand the president as a... So, so that's, what I'm, that's what I'm trying to understand. Who is... Who runs Twitter? Yeah, I don't know that. Racist. We've seen this movie before. Democrats, your race card is overdrawn. <laughs> By the way, a new Rasmussen poll finds one-third, a full one-third of Democrats believe, quote, any time a white politician criticizes a black politician, it is racism, end of quote. Wow. Does it work the other way around? Any time a person of color, a politician of color, 
criticizes a white politician, is that racism? If so, I know somebody who would be. I feel like regardless, the R word is the R word, regardless of what color you are. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm saying, I don't look at that. It's Beyond death, what? It is. Oh, right. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. Goodness. President Trump only asked him to leave the country. Maxine Waters wants to leave anywhere. So I guess I have to leave the planet once again because of Trump's tweets and because of the send her back chant in North Carolina. The Democrats are talking about a restoration of civility. Mm. Never mind the race car was pulled on Joe Biden by Kamala Harris and Cory Booker and the race car was pulled on Nancy Pelosi by AOC. The Democrats want a return to civility. Let's go to the videotape, shall we? The stench of fascism is in the air. 1964, California Democrat Governor Pat Brown, when Barry Goldwater accepted the Republican nomination. I am scared that if Ronald Reagan gets into office, we are going to see more of the Ku Klux Klan and a resurgence of the Nazi Party. 1980, Coretta Scott King. Ronald Reagan is trying to replace the Bill of Rights with fascist precepts lifted verbatim from Mein Kampf. 1983, William Clay Sr., Democrat from Missouri. I believe George H.W. Bush is a racist for many, many reasons. He's a mean-spirited man who has no care or concern about what happens to the African-American community. I truly believe that. 1992, Representative Maxine Waters, Democrat from California. It's so these are Democrats that are saying this type of stuff. Yeah. And they, they said this from the beginning. Democrats, literally, dem, a lot of Democrats are the hard work. Yeah. I they try to put out that, you know, and that's just, you know, my understanding and watching videos and doing research. Yeah. It's not S word or N word anymore. It's not S word, a slur for Latinos, or N word, you know what that is, anymore. Republicans say, let's cut taxes. 1994, Charlie Rango, Democrat, New York. The new Republican controlled house is like the Duma and the Reichstag, referring to the legislature set up by Tsar Nicholas II of Russia and the parliament of the German Weimar Republic that brought Hitler to power. 1995, Representative John Dingell, Democrat, Michigan. The GOP is coming for our children. They're coming for the poor, the sick, the elderly and the disabled, 1995. Representative John Lewis, Democrat, Georgia. The GOP has a white boy attitude, which means I- So, and the, and the thing that, the thing that uh, I see what he's doing is he's coming from this year all the way to 2000. Yeah, like bringing uh, it this back. This is continued, you know, like this is a continued yeah. thing. It's not just starting. Fact. Must exclude, denigrate, and leave behind. They don't see it or think about it. It's a culture. 1999, Donna Brazil, Al Gore's presidential campaign manager. The Republicans bring out Colin Powell and J.C. Watts because they have no program, no policy. They have no love, no joy. They'd rather take pictures with black children than feed them. 2000, Donna Brazil, former DNC chair and former head of Al Gore's campaign. We are in danger. The extreme right wing has seized the government, so look out. The right wing media, the FBI, they are targeting our leadership. 2001, Reverend Jesse Jackson. You mean Uncle Tom types? 2001, Gloria Allred on a radio show referring to Colin Powell and Condoleezza Rice. But that's what I'm saying. How are a lot of these Democrats saying this and saying that, but they go home to a nice grid? They go home to food on the table. Where are they at when they need to be helping these communities out? Something that that's it they wanted to do. Yeah, right. You know? That don't make sense. What we are dealing with right now in this country is whether we are having a kind of bloodless silent coup. President George W. Bush is trying to bring himself 
all the power to become an emperor, to create Empire America. 2002, Representative Jim McDermott, Democrat, Washington. George W. Bush is our Bull Connor. 2005, Representative Rangel again, this time referring to the Birmingham, Alabama Democrat segregationist superintendent of public safety who sick dogs and turned water hoses on civil rights workers. Wow. Every day, George W. Bush's administration unleashes squadrons of digital brown shirts to harass and hector any journalist who is critical of the president. 2005, Al Gore. Democrats versus Republicans is a struggle between good and evil, and we're the good. 2005. Go see this? See this? This little quote right here. I don't, I don't know about that one. I feel like he reaching. Governor yeah. Howard Dean, chair of the DNC. George W. Bush has improved on the techniques used by the Nazi and the communist propaganda machines. 2006, George Soros. George W. Bush let people die on rooftops in New Orleans because they were poor and because they were black. 2006, then Senate candidate Claire McCaskill, Democrat from Missouri, who won her race. George W. Bush's administration engaged in ethnic cleansing by inaction. So by simply not doing anything to alleviate this, they let the hurricane do the ethnic cleansing and their hands are clean. End of quote. 2006, Representative Barney Frank, Democrat from Massachusetts, referring to George W. Bush's allegedly sluggish response to the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. The Republican Party would have the American flag and the swastika flying side by side. That's 2006, That's Julian Bond, Chairman yeah. NAACP. That, that right there? It is probably crazy. That is wild. That's wild. How do you? How, I forgot how to screenshot. How, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I seen something that I didn't like. It's $119 on my account. Oh. <laughs> how to screenshot? No oh, Mac. It's a way that you do it. Command Shift Three. Um. Or Shift Command Shift Three. Thanks. That's wild. The House of Representatives has been run like a plantation. And you know what I'm talking about. 2006, mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton. Command shift three. <laughs> the GOP is the white party. Oh, I want to get this. 2000. Command shift three. Eight. This is how crazy. Like, how again, <laughs> DNC, former chair. The animosity directed towards President Barack Obama is because of the belief among many white people, not just in the South, but all over, that African Americans are not qualified to lead this great country. End of quote. 2009, former President Jimmy Carter. Mitt Romney's gonna put y'all back in chains. Whoa. 2012, Joe, Joe Biden. Vice President Joe Biden quote. to a predominantly black audience about Mitt Romney's refusal what? to push for further regulation on Wall Street. Gonna put y'all back in chains. Some right, who is y'all? I think he's talking about me. Some Republicans believe that slavery isn't over and they think they won the Civil War. 2014, Representative Charlie Rangel. So Democrats are pushing for a restoration of civility? When exactly right. did they practice it? Wow. George Herbert Walker Bush, racist? I thought that was at least one Bush liberals liked. Because of the passing of President George H.W. Bush, the last president from the greatest generation. <laughs> Bush served uh, in World War II as a torpedo bomber pilot in the Pacific Theater, flew 58 missions, um, when his plane got hit by Japanese anti-aircraft guns, he had to bail out. And this is actual footage of a young George H.W. Bush being rescued by the crew of a submarine. By the way, we keep hearing over and over again how President Trump has coarsened race relations. He's made race relations worse. Did he? 
Take a look at this graph. 2007, whites' ratings of relations between whites and blacks as very good or somewhat good, 75%. But by 2015, it had declined to 45%. Now, who was president in 2007? George W. Bush, 75%. Who was president in 2015 when it declined to 45%? Not Donald Trump. Now let's look at blacks' perceptions. Blacks' ratings of relations between whites and blacks as very good or somewhat good, 2001, 70%. 2013, 66%. 2016, 49%. <laughs> now, just who was president when race relations from the perception of blacks peaked at 70%. George W. Bush. See, and it's crazy because people don't want to see the stats. I was say, yeah, people don't know and don't want to see it. Who was president see the stats. in 2013? Trust me, stats will win every time. Yeah. Stats will win every time. Take it from my voice and last night. <laughs> it speaks for itself. Barely. Blessed with a good payment. Betty, what did I look up? Stats. <laughs> 13 when it was at 66 percent Barack Obama but who was president in 2016 three years later when it declined to 49 percent Barack Obama now another thing you hear is that President Donald Trump has snatched the Republican Party has done a hostile takeover of the Republican Party has now made the Republican Party in his own image really check out this graph perceptions of president's political views the percentage of Americans who think Donald Trump is too liberal, 17%. The percentage who thought George W. Bush too liberal, 18%. One point diff. The percentage who thinks Donald Trump's views are just right, 38%. The percentage of people- So this is everybody, this is Americans. Yeah. So we got about right at 38% for Donald Trump. Barack Obama has 35%. That's showing, that's a difference. Yes, yeah, too. A percentage. Regardless if it's just about 1%, that means it's better still. Too liberal, you're obviously not gonna see that with Donald Trump. Yeah. You know, so that that's not what I'm looking at. I'm not looking at too liberal, I'm not looking at too conservative. I'm looking about who is about right with the political views. Donald Trump has it. Yeah. George Bush had it. Bill Clinton had it. Barack Obama literally has the worst percentage about his political views. Yeah. People who yeah. thought George W. Bush's views were about right, 36%. Two point difference. The percentage of people who think that Donald Trump's views are too conservative, 39%. The percentage of people who thought George W. Bush's views were too conservative, 39 But that's the thing though, because Bill Clinton was a, was a Democrat, correct? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Bill Clinton. Or. Bill Clinton. My Siri not picking up my voice. Bill Clinton. <laughs> I'm learning. Yes. Yes. He Remember was? the Democratic Party. Oh, okay. So. <clears throat> So if Barack Obama was such a good president, why wasn't he up with the 43% of about right with the political views? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's- 9%. The point is, for all the people saying Donald Trump is engaged in a hostile takeover of the Republican Party, look at how people perceive them ideologically, almost identical. Now, as to why I think race relations declined under Barack Obama, two reasons. When Obama was interviewed as a senator, he was not yet the front runner in 2008 by Steve Croft at 60 Minutes. Croft said, Senator Obama, if you don't get the nomination, will it be because of racism? And Obama gave what I thought was a spectacular answer. He said, no, if I don't get the nomination, it will be because I have failed to articulate a view that the American people can embrace. Fast forward, President Obama then says, Racism is in our DNA. If I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. The Cambridge police acted stupidly. Oh, there's a place called Ferguson, which Obama referred to in an address to the United Nations. He embraced Black Lives Matter. His AG, 
Eric Holder said, when it comes to matters of race, America has been a nation of cowards, whatever that means. Eric Holder even said the push for voter ID, which a majority of blacks even support, was an example of pernicious racism. So I think a lot of people thought the Obama they were gonna get was the Obama on 60 Minutes. Instead, they got the Obama who invited Al Sharpton to the White House over 70 some odd times. The second reason I think Obama's popularity declined, at least among blacks, is because of the perception that if only a person were in the White House who was black, who understood my issues, my life would be so much better off. Think I'm being demeaning when I say a lot of blacks assume that a black person know. in the White House would make a massive difference in their lives? Remember Peggy Joseph? It was the most memorable time of my life. I, I, it was a touching moment because I never thought this day would ever happen. I won't have to worry about putting gas in my car. I won't have to worry about paying my mortgage. You know, if I, if I help him, he's gonna help me. I interviewed a woman named Liz Kroiken, and she said I covered Trump for 10 years when he was in New York. I'm an entertainment reporter, she said. It is my job to find dirt on people. I never heard he was a racist. I never heard he was a fascist. I never heard he was a homophobe until he ran for president. In fact, she said, blacks used to embrace Donald That's Trump. That's what I'm saying. I didn't hear no type of nothing about somebody talking about Donald Trump until he ran for president. I was like, until he's actually running for president, then everybody want to come with him. That's a little, I don't know. That's, that's odd. Oh, oh, that was so then. Yeah. Now, despite all of the trashing, Pew Research estimates that ABC, NBC, CBS gave President Trump 91% negative coverage. My goodness. And still, his poll numbers are as high as they've ever been in his presidency. That must be frustrating for a lot of people. I know one gentleman, person of color, who's probably pretty happy about it. Uh, give my uh, remarks to all of the Trump haters, all of the Hillary Clinton supporters, all of the people that said uh, that my Trump was gonna lose. So I say to you, this morning, the day after the election. <laughs> I know you're not do that. <laughs> we are in the video on that part. Yeah. I just let you know everything right there. I let you know everything right there. Oh, Make sure y'all hit that like button, that's kind of, let me know your thoughts in the comments, I can't say much, you know? Yeah. Can't say much. But uh, this is definitely a, a, a crazy video that I think definitely needs to be out there. Make sure yeah. you hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, catch y'all next one.